Water, it is life, it brings death. Water is essential for our bodies, our minds, our sustenance, our very survival. Leonardo da Vinci called water, quote, the driving force of all nature. And comedian Chris Rock said, there are only three necessities in life, water, food, and compliments. Now, water can be our friend, water can be our enemy. It can be a solution, it can be a problem. It is physical, it is spiritual, healing yet destructive. And we in America continue to unfortunately disrespect our water. So let me show you the good, the bad, and the ugly of our world of water. Drinking natural spring water contains minerals and trace elements, very good things to keep our bodies healthy. Uh, chloride helps bring uh, proper acidity levels to our blood system. Potassium maintains our electrolyte balance. Zinc supports uh, our immune system. And calcium lowers blood pressure and keeps our bones strong. All of this found in natural, pure water. But water is not just water, it does taste different, picking up different minerals and trace elements unique to their point of origin. Best reflected in the Berkeley Springs International Water Tasting, sounds goofy, uh, held each February in West Virginia where I've been a judge for many years. It was George Washington who promoted Berkeley Springs as a place to bathe in and drink waters for their health properties. And of course, water is spirit. Quote, from our worldly entrance in a burst of amniotic fluid to the ritual washing of the dead, water flows through our lives, scribbling a line between sacred and profane, life and death. We are doused, dunked, dipped, sprinkled, and blessings flow deep and wide as the River Jordan, wondrous as the spring at Lourdes, writes Kathy Newman in National Geographic. Dr. Masaru Emoto writes in his book, The Hidden Messages in Water, quote, we are, start off 90% as water as, as fetuses. When we are born, we are about 90 92%. And by the time we reach adulthood, we're down to 70%. If we die of old age, we'll probably be 50% water. In other words, he says, water, we live in water throughout our lives. And his groundbreaking work chronicling and photographing water crystals and how both positive and negative images and vibrations affect the literal health of water was met with skepticism. But let me ask you a question. Is it better to respect or disrespect water? Is it better to speak words of love and compassion or hate and indifference? Now, I was with uh, Dr. Uh, Emoto in Honolulu and stood on the banks of the Iowa Wall Canal, one of the dirtiest canals in the city. Dr. Emoto led a prayer, quote, we love you water, we praise you water, we thank you water. Now, can this exercise actually affect the health of this canal? I have no idea. But as Dr. Emoto told me, quote, water is the messenger of God. So what impacts over our lifetime are we unaware of as it relates to what is in our water? Our air, our land, our food supply, our water supply, all have been compromised. If we consume tainted water every single day, every week, every month, for decades, we might be putting ourselves at risk and not even be aware of it. I don't say this to induce fear, I say this to make you aware. So perhaps Julia Roberts could be forgiven when she won the Academy Award for her performance in Aaron Brockovich and actually forgot to thank the real Aaron Brockovich, but it's telling to me that she never once mentioned the residents of Hinkley, California. Hexavalent chromium was found in their water supply and many of the residents had suffered serious diseases and conditions for decades. PG&E built the Hinkley compressor station and used the hexavalent chromium to fight corrosion for the working parts of their facility. Water dissolved the chromium off the pipes, that toxic wastewater was then discharged charged into unlined ponds, which percolated into the groundwater, affecting an area originally two miles long and a mile wide. When I visited PG&E and Hinkley in 2004, the contamination plume is now seven miles long and three miles wide. But it's on its way to getting cleaned up, using ethanol injections, shown here, and organic agriculture. PG&E told me it would take another 40 years to clean it up, not including the decade they've already been at it. Now, the Hinkley story reminds us that water needs to be protected and monitored. That the chromium migrated seven miles out tells us what we know, that water will go where it will and toxins are no respecters of persons. That can be cleaned is a product of science and nature. That there is hope for the restoration of the Hinkley Valley is a uniquely human thing. In a disturbing report of Orwellian magnitude, the Associated Press conducted a five-month investigation showing how polluted America's municipal water supplies really are. Their findings, a vast array of pharmaceuticals, antibiotics, anticonvulsants, mood stabilizers, sex hormones, found in the drinking water of at least 41 million Americans. Canada's worst outbreak of E. coli contamination began not in a large city, but a rural place of Ontario. The community of Walkerton had a population of just under 5,000 people, but saw 2,300 people, nearly half, fall ill, resulting in seven deaths. 
The region's public health officer would later say the catastrophe was completely presentable. At five minutes to midnight on Thursday, March 12, 1928, the towns of Santa Paula, Newhall, in Ventura County were undoubtedly peaceful. Residents asleep in their warm beds. The St. Francis Dam upstream, not even a thought. Three minutes later, all hell would break loose and 600 people would be dead from the single worst engineering disaster in the 20th century. The St. Francis Dam shows us that 13 billion gallons of water cannot be tamed. Catherine Mulholland, you see here, dam builder William Mulholland's granddaughter told me, by now we know that homo sapiens have plundered the earth. We've dislodged, we've displaced, we've removed forests and oceans. We've flourished and suffered. When you move water, things get destroyed in the process. Globally, 1.3 billion people, men, women, and children, just like you and me, do not have access to fresh, clean water each and every day. According to the UN, one billion children live without even basic sanitation facilities and drink unsafe water, which is completely preventable. Therefore, diarrhea leading to dehydration is the leading cause of illness and death. In the 20 seconds it took me to read that paragraph, a child has died as a result of poor sanitation. Water requires involvement from water preservation to water infrastructure, beach cleanups, global water policies that are sustainable, and bringing clean water to communities across the globe. This is, my friends, our world of water. We are responsible if we pollute and contaminate, and we are responsible if we choose to do nothing. We cannot continue to disrespect our water in any form. As the poet W.H. Auden wrote, quote, thousands have lived without love, not one has lived without water. Thank you.